I wrote my first line of code exactly 10 years ago. Since then, I've made over $700,000 in salary. I've led multiple million dollar projects. I've worked in LA, New York, and some of the best offices in the world. I've went from a beginner to a senior software engineer, and I survived multiple waves of layoffs. I've taken some notes here that I wanna share with you. I will compress 10 years of career advice and brutal truths into this video. Hard truth number one, nobody cares about your GitHub projects. You need to approach the game differently. Your color picker 3000 won't land your job. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. If you want to build projects that recruiters love, you need one of three things. Number one, if your project has some kind of business use case, meaning that it solves some kind of problem, that's perfect. It doesn't mean that you need to build a full startup. A small project like a weekend project is fine for this. Number two, if your project is very fun, it's a creative idea and you learn a ton of it, that helps as well. And number three, if your project utilizes some popular trending technology that will also help you stand out. One of these three points is enough, but ideally you have two or three of them combined. So for example, let's say you want to work in the ed tech space or the education technology space, and you build an AI app that helps students prepare for the ACT exams. So you solve a problem, it has like a business use case, right? And you use some kind of trending technology, use AI. If you apply to those types of companies, like if you apply to education companies, education startups, of course, if they see you, your profile with your projects, or they see another guy who just has like color picker 3000 type projects, they're going to pick you because you're going to stand out a lot more. You're directly in line with what this business is doing. And that's going to help you get interviews. Hard truth number two. People sitting next to you doing the exact same job as you could be making $10,000 more than you. Learn to negotiate your salary. Many engineers are too afraid to negotiate their salary because especially now jobs are so hard to get that as soon as they get something, they just jump on it. But negotiating your salary before signing an offer is the biggest opportunity you'll ever have to increase your salary. I added an extra $50,000 of salary through negotiations alone. Imagine if I picked, if I accepted the job offer at the beginning without negotiating. Imagine how much money I would have lost. The best shot you have at negotiations is, like I said, right before signing the offer. If you have multiple offers at the same time, that's gold. You can negotiate like crazy. You're going to feel very confident. But even if you don't have any offers on the table, it's still fine to negotiate. The very first job offer I had, it was a $90,000 annual salary. I had no other job offers on the table. I told them, if you give me $100,000, $100, I'm going to sign today. And they accept it. You never know. Always negotiate. Remember, if you don't ask, the answer will always be no. Hard truth number three. Code is just a tool. Don't fall in love with it. Only fall in love with problem solving. You will be rewarded based on the problems you solve and the value you provide. Customers don't care about how many lines of code you write, how difficult it was to write them, which tech stack you used. Like, think about it. You yourself, when you use any kind of software, do you care about how many lines of code were written, how difficult it was for the engineers? Like, it doesn't matter, right? You don't care if they use JavaScript or React or Vue or Next.js or jQuery. You only care if the software works well, if it does the job that you want it to do. That's all. So don't fall in love with any particular tech. Use the tools that will solve the problem in the best way. And you will be rewarded for that. Advice number four. Whenever a new viral technology comes out, Build projects of it. You will leverage the hype. It's the easiest way to get new opportunities. Imagine if when GPT-3 came out, you were one of the first people who built a project of it. Even if your project was small, even if you build just like a simple AI chatbot, it would have gotten so much traction because you're one of the first. It's an amazing viral technology. And I'm sure you would have had people reach out to you to ask you to build an AI chatbot like this on their website. And they would pay you like $5,000 to make it. When you leverage an existing hype and you're one of the first to do it, it's one of the easiest ways to stand out. And you only need to do it once or twice until you get enough opportunities that you can leverage long term. That's all. You don't need to do it every single time. It also doesn't matter if the hype fades away. Who cares? You'll get the attention and make opportunities now. And then you just need to leverage them. Hard truth number five. Nobody cares about your lead code grind. If you're not getting interviews, you have a different problem you need to solve first. The hardest challenge in today's market is getting interviews. That's by far the hardest test. Know your inputs and outputs. Lead code won't help you land interviews. It will only help you at the very end of the process. Recruiters, they don't care if you know how to use bubble sort or if you have sold 500 lead code challenges. They do care about what you have built though, the project that you have created. Know the ROI, so the return on investment of every action that you're making based on where you are in your job process. If you apply to startups, most of them don't even ask lead code questions anyways. Spend more time on the most critical tasks. Advice number six. Let everyone know about what you have accomplished, both inside the company and publicly online. 
you can't get promoted if no one knows what you do. You cannot get new opportunities if no one is aware of things that you have built. When you make your work more visible inside your company, it's going to help you get promoted. And it's not only about the code that you're writing. It's things like leading projects, mentoring others, preparing meetings, making sure you meet deadlines. This part is very important. If you learn the art of estimating, if you know exactly how to give a timeline for when a project is going to be finished and you deliver on time, you're going to make your managers or your CEOs love you. When you give a timeline for a project and you deliver it within that timeline, you're going to build trust. You're going to be known in the company as the person who says something and they get things done. And you're going to get bigger and bigger projects as a result of it. And bigger projects means bigger salary, bigger promotions. When you make your work visible online now, you're going to attract a different type of opportunities, new opportunities that are outside of your company, things like new job offers, freelance gigs. I shared projects like this that I built online. And just last month, I finished a $6,000 freelance gig because of some projects that I post online. It was a freelance gig that didn't take me much time, something that I was just doing on the side. And it was like a nice extra $6,000 for that month. Even if your post has low engagement, you never know who is watching. I got interviews like this at top tech companies, like companies that raised billions of dollars like Scale AI, just because of my online activity on LinkedIn. Even though I don't have a lot of likes, you just never know who is watching your post. By the way, many of you guys asking for strategies on how to land a high paying remote tech job. So I've created two free resources for you. One is a list of companies who are hiring right now, who are actively hiring. So I'm going to leave a link in the description. You can sign up, get it for free. The other one is a free class that I'm organizing where I'm going to give you my four step framework to land jobs now in the competitive market. Check it out again. Link is in the description. It's going to be a live class also, so don't miss it. Hard truth number seven. You can't become a good coder by following tutorials. You need to code on your own. Coding is problem solving. Following a tutorial means that in general is zero problem solving. You will just become a good copycat. Only follow tutorials if you do most of the work yourself and check the tutorial to get unstuck. The best way to become a good coder is to work on projects and find new situations that you haven't done before and try to solve them. Rule number eight, every rejection is a data point. See it as a masterclass in interview skills. It doesn't matter how many times you fail. You only need to succeed once. The one offer will erase all your failures. Keep learning from every rejection. If you apply to 50 jobs and you get zero replies, don't just apply to another 50 the exact same way. Change something, change something in your strategy, apply and then learn and keep iterating like this. Have an analytic approach, use data. The first time I was applying to jobs, I was just applying to through the job portals, right? And it wasn't really successful. So I thought, what if I also start DMing people direct on LinkedIn? So people who work at those companies, I'm going to find them and I'm going to DM them. I got five times more replies using this strategy. Advice number nine, network extensively. This is the best way to get jobs and opportunities in the current market. I got interviews and high paying freelance gigs just because of people I know. It's probably over $100,000 worth of opportunities that I got because of my network. Get in the habit of talking to one new person every week on LinkedIn, on Twitter. Find people you're interested in, engineers who are building cool stuff, managers at other companies, business owners. Nurture the relationship by showing them what you're working on, by posting online. That's the point that I was mentioning before about sharing your accomplishments online. It helps more people discover you and then it helps the people you know. It helps nurture the connection with them so they don't forget you. Rule number 10, have a career plan. Know where you want to be in five years and work backwards from there. If you walk blindly with no sense of direction, you're going to lose a lot of time. It's like going to the gym without any workout plan. Yeah, you might sweat, you might train, but you're not going to be as efficient. You're not going to see real gains. Make a plan as soon as possible. If you need help figuring out what to do, look up the Ikigai framework. This will help you figure out your overall direction. There will still be unknowns in your plan. You can't plan everything, right? You cannot control everything. That's why you need to make smart bets in your career. Choose companies and projects that have the potential for outsized returns. Think of yourself as an investor where the asset that you're investing is your time. Every company you join, you're going to dedicate at least one, two years, maybe more of your life for that company. So think if it's the best return of the time that you give. Series B startups are the perfect example for that because it's companies that are in hyper growth mode. There is a ton that you can learn from them. You can climb the ladder. You're going to get paid a lot. You're going to get equity that could be worth a lot of money once the startup exits. And then you might start your own business later on with the skills that you have acquired. So it's a very good return on investment. Evaluate each opportunity you have as an investor who is about to invest part of his life. Make it count. Advice number 11. Research the company before going to interviews. If you can give them new ideas, you win. 
Researching a company before going to an interview is obvious, right? That's basic. But the next level here is if you can propose them new ideas during the interview. If you can do that, it shows that you're the perfect fit for them. The first job that I landed during the interviews, I literally brainstormed the CEO. And then they gave me a $100,000 offer when I was just a new grad. I had just graduated. They had people in their pipeline that had three to four years of experience, but they gave me the job. The second job that I landed, I doubled my salary and I did the exact same thing. I gave them ideas to grow their product while I was talking with the manager in the interview. Rule number 12, in each job, you either earn or you learn, ideally both. If you get neither, move on. It's fine to join a company if you're underpaid. That's okay, especially at the beginning of your career if you're learning a lot. It's also fine to stay at a company where you are paid well, but you don't learn anything. I reached that state twice in my career. The only thing is that it's pretty boring, right? Because you're not learning anything new. So the best is to have both. You earn and you learn. But if you have neither, you're completely wasting your time. You have to move on as fast as possible. Hard truth number 13. You work all day but can't get anything done because you allow too many distractions. Protect your deep work time. As developers work on our computer all day, and unfortunately that's where all the distractions are. So you have to create an environment on your computer to block all the distractions. And there are two things that I recommend. There's two Chrome extensions. Number one is the unhook for YouTube. It's a Chrome extension that is going to block a bunch of things on YouTube that push you to stay longer, like recommended videos, your homepage of all the videos that are available there, the feature that does it so that when you finish watching a video, it's automatically going to turn on another video. So that's one. The other uh, Chrome extension is called Social Focus. It's going to work for all social medias like Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, etc. And you can block, again, a lot of the features that help that make you stay longer on the platform. You can block the comments, you can block the recommended and the suggestion uh, profiles and reels and stuff like that. Another hack that I'm using is that I put my phone on black and white mode. It's a trick that I discovered. There's some studies that show that when you put your phone on black and white, when the colors disappear, it's much easier to not stay longer on your, on your phone because the phone is just not that attractive once there is no colors on it. And then I went a step further and did the same thing on my computer on the social media websites. So I did that on Instagram and on Twitter. I downloaded an extension called Grayscale the Web. And now my Instagram and Twitter are both in black and white. I spend much less time on them. All those things, they keep you away from your goals. If you want to work on some project for one hour now, and then you take your phone and you're like, oh, I'm going to just watch it for five minutes. You end up watching it for an hour. Now you're late for your work. You start stressing. You miss it for today. You didn't finish everything you're supposed to do. And then you repeat that tomorrow, then the day after, the day after. You do that for one year, two years, five years, ten years. At the end of the day, instead of being here where you could have been reaching your potential, you're going to fall here just because of time you have stupidly wasted destroying your brain on social media. So protect your attention. Advice number 14. Use your company's resources to its full extent. It's free money that they're giving you. Personal development budgets, referral policies, mentorship programs. Most companies give you a budget for personal development. My previous company offered close to $4,000 that I could use on personal development, online classes, workshops, attend conferences, cover the cost of hotels, flight tickets. Most people in the company, they use nearly zero of that budget. And that's true for the majority of engineers. They get free money, then they don't use it. They get lazy to even use it. Don't be one of them. Make sure to max out your usage. It's literally money they give you to grow and become better and learn more things. Companies also pay a lot of money to their employees if they can refer developers to them. They can pay from $5,000 to $10,000 ranges if you can bring another developer in the company. Sometimes even more, depending on the position. Most developers, they don't get involved in the recruitment process of their company. They don't even know which position they're hiring for, which is really a wasted opportunity. Because if imagine you have a friend or a former colleague or a former teammate or a classmate who would be a great fit because your company is currently looking for like a full stack developer. You don't know about it. If you knew about it, you could have recommended them. Your friend would get a job. The company would be happy because they get a, a new employee and you would get like five to $10,000 just for that. Like this is truly passive revenue. You just need to do one introduction and you can get this. So it's a win-win situation. Your company will also have smart people who are years ahead of you. Use them as mentors. This can save you years of time. My mentor helped me negotiate my salary. He told me how to build advanced AI apps. Um, he told me how to use technologies like RAG, Lane Chain, and a bunch of other things. Some companies have policies that match junior developers to mentors. But if they don't have that, just look into your company directory, find someone you like who has experience, someone that you want to learn from, DM them, ask them if they could become your mentor, tell them what your goal is for your career, schedule weekly calls with them, and then have a plan for every week of what you want to do, and then track progress based on it. 
for me, like one of my goals was to build advanced AI apps. So I want to learn how to do this. So I had this goal, I had a specific app that I wanted to build, and every week I had a task that I need to work on. I would work on those tasks, present it to him, and then would pair program, discuss, he'd give me tips, and this is how I was improving and growing on that objective. Advice number 15, after a few years of experience, build a productized agency. You'll be paid a lot higher. A productized agency is a business model where you provide your development services to companies for a monthly fee. So it's basically you code for them, you make projects for them, and they pay you for that. It can be a one-person business or you can hire a few employees and have a business like that. What you have to realize is that for whatever company you're working on, for the majority of jobs, the value that you provide is usually 10 times higher than the salary than what they pay you for, right? Because that's how for a business it's profitable to hire you. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. If they hire you for $100,000 and they get a lot less than that from you, they wouldn't hire you. The reality is, it might be hard to believe, but the value you bring to a company is usually a lot higher than what they pay for. For me, the code that I have written, it has generated over $20 million of extra revenue for the companies where I have worked at. Now think about this. Think about what if you could work directly with clients so that you don't have to go through a company that just pays you like a fixed salary. What if you could work with clients directly? You can propose them your services for much cheaper because you don't have a huge company, you, you don't have like offices you need to pay, you don't have this huge machine that you need to feed, right? It's just you yourself. And you can propose them a payment that is much lower. And if you take a client, for example, and you tell them that your development services are like $5,000 per month, you can take a few of those clients that's like 5,000, 10,000, 15. You can go up to maybe $20,000 if you have four clients that you work together at the same time. And if they all ask very similar things, so you basically you specialize yourself in a niche, like AI development, for example. Like you provide AI development services for companies, you help them integrate AI tools, build AI features, and you specialize in a niche where every project is very similar to each other. So taking a new client is not a lot of extra work. It's not like something that's super custom. You take four or five of those clients just by yourself, you're already at like twenty to $25,000 per month. Then if you want to scale it further, you want to hire like a few extra people, then you can go and scale it up to maybe $100,000. You can make a lot more money like this, being completely free, working on your own terms. But for this to work though, you need great coding skills, you need a proven track record, and you need to have a network to start getting your first clients. Without this, it's very difficult. That's why I recommend doing this once you have a few years of experience. It's still possible to do it without any experience, but it's much more difficult. That's why I recommend you first work a little bit, and then go to this route of creating your business. By the way, if this type of video is valuable for you, please comment, share this video. I look into analytics. If I see the video performs well and you guys like it, I'm going to make more videos like this. If it doesn't, I'll think you guys don't like it. It's not valuable for you. So I'll use my time to do something else. So please share it so I know that this is what you want.